Welcome back to the channel. If you are preparing for Java interviews, you are in the right place. This is the fifth video in our core Java interview questions playlist. Today we will tackle one of the most frequently asked topics, multithreading in Java. Let's jump straight into the most important interview questions and their concise interview ready answers. So the basic question would be what is multithreading in Java? So first let us understand what is a thread. A thread is a lightweight independent unit of execution that shares the same memory space as other threads in the same process. So it is a smallest unit of execution. Now what is multithreading? Multithreading in Java is the process of executing multiple threads simultaneously within a single program. Now the, uh, this is one of the important question. What are the ways to create a thread or it can be asked like how we can achieve multithreading. So we can create a thread either by extending the thread class or implementing the runnable interface. Now uh, this would be the counter question. Which one's the better way to create a thread? Extending thread class or implementing runnable interface? So implement uh, the answer would be implementing a runnable interface is better because thread class also internally implements the runnable interface only. Also, since multiple inheritance is not supported in Java, if we extend the thread class, then we cannot extend any other class. But if there is no need to extend another class, then extending the thread class is better because if we implement a runnable interface, then we have to add one extra step of passing the runnable interface object to the thread class uh, for achieving the multithreading. Uh, next question is what in, explain life cycle of a thread. So uh, a thread goes through various states uh, uh, through its uh, life cycle. So when we create the object of thread like this one thread t1 equal to new thread then this thread is in the new state. Then when the start method is called on the object of this thread class then it goes to runnable that the thread is about to run but has not yet started running when the actually the run method of that uh, thread object is called then the thread is in running state now if there is any sleep wait or any io operation then the thread goes to non runnable or block state and then once the execution is completed the uh, thread is in terminated state uh, Next question is why do we call start method on thread and not directly run method? So directly calling run method will run the single thread only and multi-threading will not be achieved. Also start method has some hidden functionalities such as registering the thread and instantiating its life cycle. Uh, so next question could be what happens if we do not override the run method? So simply it won't perform anything as the run method is an imp empty implementation in the interface. Uh, this is uh, another important question. How do threads communicate with each other? So there are two ways. One is the synchronized blocks or method. So threads use synchronized blocks or methods to ensure that only one thread can access a critical section of a code at any time. Another way is using by, uh, by using wait, notify and notify all methods. So wait causes the current thread to release the log and wait until another thread notify is notify it by calling notify or notify all on the same object. Notify wakes up a single thread that is waiting on the object's monitor. Notify all wakes up all the threads that are waiting on the object's monitor. These methods are always called from within synchronized context and are used to coordinate the execution of threads. For example, in producer consumer problem. This is another important question difference between wait and sleep. Let us uh, uh, understand the difference with the help of various features such as synchronization. So wait requires a synchronization. It needs to be called within a synchro from within a synchronized block. But for sleep, we do not require any synchronization. Uh, so what, what is the action? So it releases the object's monitor log and makes the thread wait until it is notified by another uh, thread using notify or notify all. 
but sleep simply pauses the threat's execution for a specified duration. Interruption, here uh, it is uh, same for both. Uh, it wakes up if it is interrupted or the timeout occurs. Purpose, so the main purpose of wait method is for inter-thread communication and the main purpose of uh, sleep is for just for pausing the execution of thread. Now wait method is an is a method of object class which is a topmost class in the hierarchy and sleep method is a static method of the thread class uh, this can this question can also be asked how to awaken a blocked thread so we have already seen this before we can use notify notify all and join method to awaken any block thread what is a daemon thread so a daemon thread in java is a background thread that supports other tasks such as system garbage collection logging and system monitoring so the daemon threads have lower priority compared to the user threads the one which are created by the user and it does not prevent the java virtual machine from exiting when all the user threads finish their execution so once all the user threads have finished the execution jvm can exit uh, even though there is a daemon thread running in the background so how to ensure threads threads run in sequence like t1 then after that t2 then after that t3 so we can use join method for that so it will join uh, execution of thread uh, uh, chain uh, chain the execution of threads now uh, another question can be asked explain the priority of thread so in java thread priority is a mechanism that helps the thread scheduler to decide the order in which threads should be executed here, yeah. so each thread is assigned a priority. It, it is a value between 1, which is lowest, and 10, which is highest. The default is 5, which is norm priority. If we do not assign any priority to any thread, then by default, 5 is assigned, which is a normal priority. So the priority range we have already seen that thread.min priority is 1, which is the lowest priority. Thread.norm priority is 5. It is the default priority. Thread dot max priority is 10, it is the highest priority. We can also set a thread's priority using the set priority method where we have to pass an integer value uh, in the range of 1 to 10. And we can also get the uh, uh, priority of the current thread by using get priority method. Now this is also another important question. Explain the difference between runnable and callable interface. So the runnable interface is a part of java.lang package and has it has been existed since java 1.0 but the callable interface was introduced in java 1.5 as a part of java.util.concurrent package so here we can see we have already seen the two difference uh, runnable interface is in java.lang package but callable is in java.util.concurrent and uh, uh, runnable interface is a part of java from java 1.0 but callable is a part of uh, Java from Java 1.5 onwards. Now, runnable is primarily used for creating tasks that do not return any result or throw checked exceptions. But uh, callable can uh, callable can be used for tasks that return results and throw checked exceptions. So here we can see the signature of uh, runnable interface and callable interface. Uh, name is runnable. The method name is run and it is not returning anything so the return type is void but here we can see we have a v here which is denoting the return type of this method call is the method name throws exception so it is in the uh, in the method signature we are having the throws uh, clause what is synchronization and how it can be achieved this is again very important question from the interview perspective so synchronization in Java is the capability to control the access of multiple threads to any shared resource. In multi-threading, multiple threads try to access the shared resource at, at, at the same time and produce inconsistent results. That's why the synchronization is necessary for reliable, reliable communication between threads. We can achieve synchronization either by using synchronized keyword before method name or by using synchronized blocks. Next question is what is the difference between synchronized method and synchronized block? This is again very important question from the interview perspective. This is this has been asked many times. 
So while both uh, provide thread synchronization, synchronized method locks the entire object, whereas synchronized blocks can lock on any object allowing for a finer grain locking. So synchronized blocks can be more efficient as they minimize the lock duration, uh, duration of the lock holding. So suppose if we are having a, a big method which is having say 30-40 lines of code but we require synchronization for only 2-3 lines of code. So instead of uh, using synchronized method we can use the synchronized block to synchronize that 2-3 specific line so that the lock is applied on that 2-3 lines and not the whole uh, method uh, which is of 30-40 lines. So that's why synchronized block uh, is uh, very efficient. Explain object level lock and class level lock. This is again very important question. So an uh, object level lock is used to synchronize access to instance specific data. Whereas a class level lock is used to synchronize access to a shared resource that are common across all the instance of a class. So it ensures that only one thread can ex uh, object level lock ensures that only one thread can execute a synchronized method or block on a particular instance of a class at any given time uh, whereas class level lock ensures that only one thread can execute a static synchronized method or block across all instances of class so to understand it better say we are having 10 objects of our class which means 10 instances of our class and per instance we are having 10 threads so if we are using object level lock then uh, out of uh, the 10 uh, threads for uh, say uh, for within the same object any one can access the uh, uh, synchronized method or synchronized block uh, and uh, for all the 10 objects any one thread can access but if we are using class level lock then say there are 10 objects and per object we are having 10 threads so out of this 100 threads only one thread can be accessing the class uh, uh, piece of code which is uh, written within class class level lock so a code explanation is given here we are having uh, uh, this can be one uh, way by using synchronized method and another thing is uh, we can use a synchronized block where we can just synchronize this instance of the class whereas if we have to uh, use class level lock then we can use static method because we know uh, static method is not uh, instance specific it, it belongs to class directly and if we are using the synchronized block we can use the demo class dot class we have to use the class name here uh, this is again very important question what is executor service and how to create the same so it is very simple basic answer executor service is used to create thread pool to run various threads efficiently so to how to create the executor service so here it, uh, is the line of code executor service you can name anything service or uh, s or es whatever uh, equal to executors dot new fixed thread pool so here there are different thread pool we will see them uh, later in the next slides and to execute the, this we have to use service dot execute and in the parameter we have to pass the object of class implementing the runnable interface Uh, so this is again very important question how many thread pools does executor service have so these are some of the thread pools which are fixed thread pool cache thread pool scheduled thread pool single threaded executor and work scaling pool we'll see one by one so fixed thread pool a pool with fixed number of threads it uses the blocking queue to execute the task cache thread pool a pool that creates new threads as needed but reuses pre previously constructed threads when available and it uses a synchronous queue so it is very important to note which uh, thread pool uses which queue this can also be asked third is scheduled thread pool so scheduled thread pool is a pool that can schedule tasks to run after a delay or at regular intervals it uses delay queue and places the next task to be executed at front a single threaded executor it is same as the fixed thread pool just the difference is the size of this thread pool will always be one this box chilling uh, pool it was introduced in java 8 it is a pool based on the fork join uh, pool framework which adapts to the available processor cores 
So how to achieve the ideal pool size? We seen in the uh, previous slide that fixed thread pool, we have to give a fixed number of threads. So how to achieve the ideal pool size? So we have to understand the use case for it. Okay. So if the tasks are CPU intensive, then the pool size should be the same as number of CPU cores. Now by using this piece of code, we can get the uh, CPU cores runtime dot get runtime dot get available processes and then whatever size is returned we can keep the uh, thread pool size uh, same as the cpu cores but if the tasks are io intensive then the thread pool size can be significantly higher as most of the threads will be waiting for io operation uh, this question can be asked if uh, uh, any experienced candidate is there with the experience of four to five to six years okay so difference, uh, the question is difference between execute and submit method of executor service. So the execute method returns void, but submit returns a future object. Execute does not allow tracking uh, task result, but submit allows retrieving the result or checking the task completion. In execute, it accepts only runnable interface object, but uh, submit can be used with runnable or callable both. In execute, exceptions are not directly catchable by the caller, whereas in submit, it supports exception handling via future.get. This is again a question for very experienced candidate having experienced more than four years. So what is the difference between future and completable future? So the future represents the result of an asynchronous com computation but the completable future extends future with non-blocking and functional features. So future is blocking like uh, if we use the get method, it waits until the task completes. Whereas completable future supports callbacks method like then apply, then accept, etc. So in future, there is no built-in support for chaining or combining tasks. So it is used for single tasks only. Whereas in completable future, we can combine multiple async tasks uh, uh, by chaining them. In future, we have limited exception handling, but in completable future, we are having better exception handling with exceptionally handle methods, etc. Now, these two programming questions on multi-threading are mostly asked uh, and these are very important questions. So the question number 79 is write the program to demonstrate the producer consumer problem so uh, we have to write a program which basically demonstrate the produ producer consumer problem and how that problem is solved so th this is very important question from the interview perspective you can uh, uh, learn it uh, from uh, any youtube video i'll also at uh, attach the link of one youtube video uh, which i personally use to understand the producer consumer problem and uh, it clarified all my doubts Another uh, question can be write a program to print 1 to 20 number using 3 threads or 4 threads or 2 threads. Also another one can be uh, used to print hello by using one thread and world by using another thread. And it should be in uh, sync. Hello world. Hello world. Hello world. So uh, this again is a part of producer consumer only like the, the same approach can be used to solve that problem. That's why I have not mentioned it here. So thanks for watching. If you find this video helpful, please like, share and comment your thoughts or questions below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update. We are just getting started. Upcoming videos will cover more crucial topics for, from interview perspective like the collection framework and advanced Java concepts. So stay tuned, keep learning and ace your next interview.